Hello, how are you? I'm back for another menopause Q&A and today I'm talking about pain, joint pain, something which I personally experience now. And yeah, as I said, what I'm talking about today is pain. And pain is something that I personally experienced a, a great deal of joint pain. It's probably my biggest symptom when it came to menopause. And I have to tell you, I did not know that this was something that was part of menopause. And I speak to more and more women and I am realising that it is really, really common. And I've done a lot of research around this and kind of I, I understand now why it's a little bit more common. I'm going to share some of that with you today because this is not really a symptom that our mothers and grandmothers um, probably experienced. So it's a relatively new menopause um, type of symptom. And the reason being is that our generation, as we're moving through menopause, we are a lot more active than our mothers and grandmothers were. We are probably the first generation of women, well, one, we're living a lot longer. Two, we've um, probably been participating in lots of different exercises and physical activity and continue and want to continue to do so after we get to you know, the age of 50 or so. So we are a bit different in the way that um, we live our lives than our mothers and grandmothers were. So this is one of the reasons why the pain thing is a little bit of a shock and women don't really expect it. I know that I didn't expect it. It took me a long time to realise what it was um, due to that was actually to do, do with my hormones. Um, I just thought I was exercising wrong. I was just, just all of these things. And for me, I... I knew I had an issue with my hip. Um, I've been active my entire life. So when I was younger, I was a ballet dancer. Um, not so great thing these days um, now that I realise that what they taught us and how they taught us was to turn everything out from the hips. They don't teach that now, thank God, because my my, my daughter does ballet. Um, they don't teach it the same way as they, um, they used to and they don't kind of force you to into really unnatural positions. But I was, I was forced into a, a, a turnout which was very, very unnatural, which caused my hips to slightly dislocate out of my joints. And I didn't even know it until um, last year when I went and um, saw a surgeon about my hips and he said, you have hip dysplasia and you've probably had it your entire life. Normally hip dysplasia is something that gets picked up um, when babies are born. He said for some reason they missed it, but I actually believe that I probably didn't have it when I was born, but the doing ballet from a very, very young age caused that to happen. So it meant that my the ball of the my the, my hip joint was not sitting within the cup; it was sitting outside. And the continual movement of me just living my life wore that down. And as I actually have osteoarthritis, so at that stage, by the time I got to see the surgeon, I was bone on bone, so I was in a lot of pain. But it wasn't just my hip that was in pain, my knees, my ankles. And I at one stage thought I had fibromyalgia, which is just all over body pain. I would wake up in pain in the morning. In fact, I I spent, um, I probably went for two years, maybe longer, where I did not sleep a full night because I was in so much pain. I couldn't, I'd lie down and I just couldn't get comfortable. I was in pain. I couldn't sleep. So for a couple of years there, I just didn't sleep because without enough sleep, the pain was worse in the morning because there was more inflammation going on. And I didn't really understand what was happening. But I do now, and I'm going to share it with you because this is something that many of my clients complain about. They talk to me about and we're actually able to resolve it. It is something that you don't have to live like this. So let's start with why this happens. Now, it's not actually menopause that's causing the problem because menopause is a natural stage of life, but it menopause makes us more vulnerable to inflammation. And that's because estrogen, our hormone estrogen is a natural anti-inflammatory. So as our estrogen levels come down, 
if we've got inflammation going on inside of our body, the protection that we had from estrogen disappears and the inflammation starts to, we start to feel the inflammation, we start to feel the heat, we start to feel the pain because the cover that estrogen gave has kind of gone away. And so we get more and more inflamed. So it's not really the, the shift from the estrogen, it's what causes the inflammation. And more generally what causes the inflammation is diet and lifestyle, stress, not enough sleep, all of that. And I'm going to go into that in a little bit more. But the inflammation is there. We remove the protection of estrogen and the inflammation gets worse. And inflammation is redness, soreness, um, stiffness is all signs of inflammation. And then on top of that, not only do we have the estrogen levels coming down and estrogen, actually, before I move on, estrogen is really essential um, because not only is it anti-inflammatory, it protects our joints and stabilizes the membranes within the joints. And so as, um, as the estrogen levels go down, because estrogen is it's, it's a fat hormone, so all of our hormones are fat-based, and that kind of gives us a bit of a, makes it a bit slippery in, inside the joints. So as that goes, it can start to get a bit stickier. And also the other thing that estrogen does is it helps us with our, our flexibility, our mobility, our, our tissue. So we get the strength and, and the rebound so we can stretch something and it can come back again. And we see this in our skin where as we age, we find that our skin can sometimes feel a bit dry, it can be a bit crepey, um, and, you know, and we get wrinkles in different places. And that's because of the loss of estrogen because it's the loss of that fat hormone that has now come out. So we don't have a strong tissue, connect, what we call connective tissue. So skin is connective tissue and so are the ligaments and the tendons that hold our joints together. They become quite lax and um, they, they don't kind of spring back the way they used to do before. Um, or on the other hand, they can become really tight, which means you've, you've lost your flexibility. So you've got the these joints that aren't being protected. You've got inflammation going on. And then on top of that, we have general wear and tear. Now, some people have said that wear and tear is not real, um, that that's just kind of a thing that us naturopaths talk about. It's just a theory. But um, it was first introduced by a doctor in 1882. Um, his name was Dr. August Weissman, and he was a German biologist. And what he was, what he saw is that different cells and tissues started to wear out um, and which caused more rapid ageing. And this was due to inflammation. So just like a car and the parts, you know, wear out after time of using them, so did our body parts, different parts of our bodies and particularly our joints and, you know, hips, knees, ankles, all of those like turning joints that as we walk and they move and they rub, that they were starting to, to wear down and it was inflammation that was causing that. Um, so this is why it's really important for us to look after our joints. Not only do we have general wear and tear, we also have that loss of protection that estrogen gave us. So there's a few things that are going on. So what can we do about this? Because you don't want to live in pain. You are going to go through menopause. That's a given. So, But there are things that you can do. So what we can do is... Number one, and if you've been listening to my other lives during the, the last couple of weeks, you will see some commonalities as we go through here. Number one is to reduce inflammation. And the things that we can do to reduce inflammation in our body is to look at the foods that we're eating. So reduce the inflammatory foods in your diet. The common inflammatory foods in diet are sugar, wheat, dairy, and sorry to say it, or oh, caffeine, you know, I didn't, uh, and the other one is alcohol. Now, my story is that when I was having ongoing pain and my diet was pretty clean, there wasn't much that was going on in my diet, but what I did do, what I was doing is I'm, I'm never, I've never been a really big drinker and I was kind of having a glass of wine on a Saturday night with dinner. We would go out to dinner, I'd have a glass of wine. And when I have wine, I drink white wine, I actually half and half it. So it's half mineral water, 
half um, wine. So I'd have a spritzer. So, you know, it, it wasn't even a full glass of wine. Or sometimes I'd have two of them, so it's one glass of wine. And, you know, I was spending all this time trying to get rid of my pain, honestly, and I was continually in pain. And it was only one night a week, and I'm thinking that's not really not going to make a difference. But I was looking at what I was eating. I was taking supplements. I was taking herbs. I was doing everything I possibly could do. And then finally, Christmas before last, or just before Christmas before last, I went, I am over being in so much pain constant pain I was over it I wanted to be able to move without pain again so I said okay I'm just gonna go without alcohol for a little while and just see what happens I have to tell you within two weeks all of my pain was completely gone so I got that through that Christmas no no alcohol at all which as I said wasn't a big deal but you know when you're out socializing it's nice to have a glass of wine or champagne or something like that no pain whatsoever and I haven't had any alcohol since, and my pain has been completely under control. I rarely get pain. Even when I went to see the surgeon about my hip, it wasn't to do with the pain. He says, oh, you must be in a lot of pain. When he looked at the, the x-rays and everything, he says, you must be in a lot of pain. And I actually, I was not in pain. The reason why I was seeing him is because I had lost mobility in my joint, so I couldn't actually move my hip. I walked with a severe limp but I had no pain, um, which he was really surprised at. But it, And it was because I had done the work to bring the inflammation down. So bringing the inflammation down um, told me that there was an inflammatory um, part of what was going on. But then once I took the inflammation away, when I still had didn't have full mobility, I knew there was something else on going on. So I then had to go and see a surgeon because there was actually something structural that I could not fix using diet, herbs, or any of that. The fact was I was bone on bone and nothing I was going to do was going to be able to fix that and nothing was ever going to be able to put that hip socket or this hip ball back into the socket. Nothing was going to happen. I needed to actually have that surgically corrected. But we need to reduce the inflammatory foods and that is reducing the sugars, the wheat, dairy, alcohol, caffeine. You need to increase anti-inflammatory foods. Now, the first thing where we start with everything is making sure you're drinking enough water. You need to have fluids so that you've actually got some fluidity and things can move. So make sure you're drinking enough water. Then look at um, some of your other anti-inflammatory foods is your oils, so your olive oils, that, that's a really nice anti-inflammatory food. Fish, so it's full of oils. Avocado, full of real healthy oils. And garlic is a really great anti-inflammatory. Bone broth has got collagen in it, which helps to rebuild um, joints and kind of like put some cushioning in there. Um, Turmeric is an absolutely fantastic anti-inflammatory so having um, curries with turmeric in it is really good or having um, turmeric lattes but not with dairy because dairy is a bit inflammatory for some people for most people dairy can be inflammatory supplements you can look at are vitamin e your fish oils turmeric as a supplement vitamin c collagen once again because collagen helps to strengthen that connective tissue that it's lost its elasticity due to the fact that your estrogen's gone down, your estrogen's lowered. Glucosamine is really good for the joint health and um, allows the joints to move and is also a natural anti-inflammatory. Um, Boswellia is a herb and is in, found in lots of um, joint um, anti-inflammatory supplements. So Boswellia is a fantastic herb for reducing um, arthritic type of inflammation. Also, Getting a good night's sleep. And once you can get the pain under control, getting a good night's sleep becomes a lot easier. And if you listen to my other live on reducing your night sweats, you do that then. Um, and if you do what I've just said about your diet, um, that will also reduce your night sweats. So reducing the, the sugar, wheat, dairy and alcohol and caffeine will reduce the night sweats as well. So then you get a good night's sleep and reducing your stress. So there's stress going on within your body, which is why there's inflammation. We also need to look at what's causing stress that's coming to you from outside and addressing that as well. So it's it's not all bad news. Um, I think the, the good news is understanding that there, 
that this is um, very common for women as they're moving through this stage of life, um, that there's something you can do about it. Now, every woman that I have worked with, the clients that I've worked with, and I actually have to say most of them tell me that they have this type of pain. I don't know if that's what I attribute. So that's it for me today. It's it's a very, very rainy, overcast, yucky day here in Sydney. Hopefully the weather gets better here or wherever you, hopefully the weather is better for you. But have a fantastic weekend. Enjoy your weekend. I will be back next week. From my heart to yours, infinite love and gratitude. Bye for now.